<laughs> right, welcome back. And on today's episode, guys, what are we up to today, Phil? What are we up to today? <laughs> so, today we're going to be showing you guys at home how to put carpet on a living room floor like this one here. So your first step when doing this job is you're going to need to grab yourself some gripper. What type you say? They do three different types. They do a wood pin, a concrete and a jewel. So today we've got a wood floor so we'll be using wood pin gripper. Right, so what we like to do is get our full lengths and we throw them around the room like so. All the way around. Ready to be trimmed in. They ain't got to be neat, we're just throwing them anywhere. Right, once you put all your full lengths around the room, a quick tip for you DIYers, if you get an offcut of the gripper, we stick it behind the screw and what this is going to do for people that are not very experienced is for one, it's going to protect your skirtings and it's going to give you the perfect spacing for someone that's not experienced. And also, while you're doing this, there's something you need to pay attention to is the arrow, but don't rely purely on that because sometimes they're printed back to front. This chamfered edge wants to sit against your wall like so, and if you look carefully, the pins are also facing the wall when you install it, and that helps hold the carpet on. So we'll go round, all the way round the perimeter, all the grippery needs to be done, very first job, using this little technique here. Right, when you come to something like a radiator or something that's low and you can't get your hammer in there, there's three methods, so I'll show you all three. One is turn your hammer on its side, and if you're lucky, the nail will go down like so. Another method is to get your carpet bolster, which you'll need to be fitting your carpet. You sit the end on your pin or nail, and you tap the handle, and that will get the pin in. Or, if you want to splash out and get yourself a drive bar, a nail bar, that goes there. Get yourself a rubber mallet and you tap the bar, like so. And that is specifically designed for this job. So let's finish that. So you can use any one of those three methods to get any low sections like this. So Phil's covered how to bang these down. I'm going to cover how to cut them. So you can cut them. These are called gripper shears. They're actually purpose for that. Or you can use tin snips, not recommended by the carpet fitters, but you can get away with them. So how you use gripper shears, you offer it up to there, and you want to come to your corner using your gripper. You slightly over, just the gripper spacing over is worth. And then you slide it in and push down against the floor, like so. You want to keep your gripper in as neat as possible. So when you come up to the corner, you want it nice and uniform and facing inwards like Phil taught you with a direction. So when you're cutting smaller pieces, and I'm going to cover also the door frame, you need two pins in each one. And this is the reason why. Say we get a good stretch on it and it goes meh. That's not acceptable. So two pins in every piece of gripper minimum. So how you want to go around the door frame, you want to get this as neat as possible to copy the sort of shape of the... So let me show you how. So you want to come around the actual frame. We're going to keep this nice and sort of simple on this occasion. We can do all the in and outs, but for simple DIYers, this will be absolutely fine. Like so. So you've still got a uniform gap all the way across your frame. If you've got a slightly thinner carpet, you want to take more time doing it and get it a bit closer. And then you want to take this all the way round the frame. I'm going to show you. So you've got a nice uniform gap and you want it to go all the way around the frame. I'm going to pin that in now. The next lay. step is to lay your underlay. How do you lay your underlay? You can fix it. What's Phil up to? You can fix it with a staple hammer, guys. That's literally a simple staples that slides into one of these little things. You can get them from any DIY store and you slide that over there like that and you click that on like that. 
And there's another method, and Phil's going to show you how. So if you don't want to get yourself a slap hammer, staple hammer, you can also get yourself some carpet adhesive, spray adhesive, multi-purpose spray adhesive, whatever you know it by, and you can spray the underlay around the edges and stick it down like that. But if you've got a timber floor, go and get yourself one of these for the cost you can get them and the cost of this. Get yourself a slap hammer. So let's show you how to put this down. So now that we've showed you what you need to put it down on your floor with, you're going to need a sharp Stanley knife. Ooh, Ready Iron to... Man. This is an Iron Man one. You don't need this one. You can just use any sort of one. Just make sure that you use a good blade because when they're cheap, they chip off. And, and I've snap. actually had one in my eye before. So just take that into consideration. These are Sweeney Todd blades. That is not a joke that everyone thinks. They're an actual brand. They're very, very, very strong. So they're a good blade to use. Especially with carpet. If you do want to get yourself a carpet fitting knife in the UK, this is a wolf knife, very good. That is a delphin, very good. Two of the best knives that are used in this country anyway. Let's get this bag so, open, Phil. We're gonna open the bag. You gently roll around the top, just like so. This is easier, and Phil's gonna show you, because he's been doing jujitsu, how what, to put it on the floor. So obviously, the bag of underlay, it can come at you from any angle. So you have to be ready. So I'll just slip. Right, so. On average, they're four and a half foot wide underlay rolls. So figure out what's going to be the best way to lay yours to get the most out of your bag of underlay. Obviously, you don't want to waste it, it costs more there. And what we do, we unroll it upside down. We come up to where we want. So if I push that, I can say I want to cut there. I pull it back and then I just cut across the top like so. You have to get a feel for that, how many layers you're going through. Mm. Once you've done that, we then want to turn it over because it's actually upside down. So right. we give it the old flippity do. Yeah. Scoot it up to our underlay, which you can just do a shuffle and it will go. Give it a shuffle with your feet. Like so. Once you've done that, we're up everywhere just a little bit. And you can see we've got pipes here. So what we do with pipes, everyone thinks that you cut around them but you don't. We just pull it back one straight line where the pipe is and it just folds around like so. That's all you need to do, you don't need to go mad. Right, so once you've cut around your pipes and it's laid and it's, that's where it's gonna go, you've decided, right, that's it, you've got everything. You can either use your adhesive, which all you're gonna do is put a small band around the edge and you'll just stick it like so, including the join inside, which will be here. Or, if you've gone and got yourself something we like to call a slap hammer or a staple hammer, you're just going to staple around the edge like so, making sure that this is not lipping onto that gripper, because that's not good. You'll have a nightmare with that. And now, we come to a little corner, fold it on its back, cut away from the corner, like so, let that fold around and staple the last section. We're going to do the whole room like this. We're not going to cut anything more. And then we'll show you us cutting it all in, ready to fit your carpet. We're going to run our next line of underlay in. We're coming from the opposite end of the room now because the manufacturers specify that they run opposites because of the edges. So if we run that that way, we want this to go this way. So we're going to do that now. Same as we did the last one. Little tip here, obviously we don't want to get tape measures and all that, not for, under, uh, not for underlay. So we just sit that there, we get our knife, you pull. Oh, and we're just going to roll it like this. Two, three, four, five. Bring it to here. One, two, three, four, five. Put it to there, cut that off. And that will be enough to get us through there. So me and Brad will flip that over now. And now you can see that the cosy that we're using today, we're using cosy 10 mil. We like it, it's nice, it's affordable, and it works very well. This cosy sign is facing this way, and then the cosy sign is facing the opposite way, and that means that these lines are how the manufacturer recommend. Right, you've got your underlay stapled in, it's all nice and fixed. Now we're gonna actually duct tape or cloth tape the joints. And why do we need to do that, Phil? Just prevents any dust coming up from underneath on your subfloor. So it seals this under, saves your carpet a bit of wear down the road. 
So, and also when you're fitting, in case the carpet catches one set film, just and it pulls it back and it ruffles up underneath, then you're like, why can't I get the carpet flat? This is the perfect reason on why you do that. Right, so once you've done all these steps, you're now ready to cut it in the whole room. And it's as easy as this. Sharp, straight knife or straight blade. Fill for your gripper. Push the knife into the corner. So let me get that out of the way so you can see where my knife is going. It's actually sitting along this gap here. And then we just pull it along, keeping our fingers out of the way. And then once you get to a corner, don't try and get all the way into the corner, it's never going to happen. Turn round and come back the other way. And then Brad's got one last tip for you before we move on to the carpet and he's going to show you right now. I'm going to try and cut it slightly short, just under the lay, so I can show you how to fix it if it does happen to you while you're fitting your underlay. So I'm going to try and cut it short, hopefully it shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. Oh, sugar. So this might happen to you. Don't worry, it's underlay and it's quite flexible. So what you do, you pull it back off your staples and you can give this underlay a little stretch forward, like so. Just give it a little stretch and hold it back in, yeah, back in place with your staple hammer and then you'll get a, still a perfect finish on it. So don't worry too much, guys. If it ain't come out perfect first time, you've got a chance to fix it on your underlay. So now that your underlay's down, your grippers down, guys, you've got your carpet. We're going to show you how to unroll it and take the pole out to bend it around corners. So Phil, first things first, where the carpet ends, if you just tuck your knife in there, you can unwrap it, lag saw. Just be careful at this stage that you don't damage the carpet below. So just nice, take your time unrolling it. If you're not too sure with a standy when you're opening it up, grab yourself a set of scissors and just scissor it open. It might be a bit easier for you guys at home. And then- nah, we don't move that wrapper. We're gonna leave that there because it protects the carpet while we're unrolling it. Right, you're gonna need two people for this method. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna be taking the weight of the carpet and then just hopping it like so. So we're just hopping it round to loosen the pole that comes in the middle of carpets. So we keep doing that. We're not unrolling it. Right, now we're loose, we should be able to pull this pole out. It's not in the best condition. <laughs> <laughs> Once that's out, we're gonna re-roll it, but not super tight. So you need two people at this stage. Keep and it on the wrapper. And just follow what we do. Just take your time, just pause this video at any point and just copy exactly what we're doing. Right, so when you need to get through a tight gap where you're not gonna get this in, you need to put two bends in it because you don't want to spend it with one, it's too harsh. So you'll do one there and one there, fold it over and take the smaller piece through. We're lucky today because we've got a straight run. But that is the top tip for you guys. So now we're going to show you guys how to actually pick your carpet up. You're going to need two people. You can do it on your own. It's a little bit of a struggle, but you can do it. We have done it all together. So let's show them how I feel. So you'll grab the roll. Working as a team. One on each end. And as soon as you go three, two, one, swing it up and roll it on your shoulder. And off we pop. And off we pop. Now that you've got your carpet laid out in your room, you need to lay it from one point to the other. Don't try and come in the room and try and lay it like that because you're good. If you try and lay it straight across, you're going to get stuck against the wall. Mark everything. It's not worth it, guys. So. Me and Phil are going to show you a quick technique on how we do it, and I hope it helps you guys at home. So we're going to grab it, we're going to turn the, I'm going to turn the side of my foot against it, and we're going to use that to let the carpet unroll out. I'm not. He's going to let his toes in. I'll let it go over my feet, personally. And then we roll it up as high as we can One reach. More. Fold it over ourselves. One more. That's it. And then take the shoes off. We're going to take our shoes off at this point. This is as far as we can go. We know the Americans don't like this, but it's what we do in the year, UK. Yep. Yeah. And then we bring it back on itself. And don't what we do is... Let it go up against any walls. So don't let it go up any of the walls because the backing is very sharp. It will damage wallpaper so easily. So just make sure when you come up to it, just fold it back on itself. 
like that until we get the rest unrolled and it means protecting the walls. This is the most important bit when unrolling a carpet. Right, so we've got to roll the rest of the carpet out and fold it like so. We'll show you. If, if it's a bit heavy, you have to go and get your mummy because <laughs> we need help. And you have to make sure she's dressed like a big massive banana. <laughs> right, so you pick it up at this stage. Come on, mummy. Yeah, that's it. And we're going to let it fold back on itself. Like so. Like pasta. That's it. Well done, Mum. We couldn't have done that without you. Cheers, Mummy. Can you go now? <laughs> Cheers. You're making us look stupid on camera. Embarrassing, <laughs> mate. So you should end up with something that looks like this. We've got as much flat area out, and the rest that we couldn't get out, we have folded like this. So your next step is to fold the two sides in smaller than the width of your room. So don't fold a little bit in, because you'll still get stuck. So we're going to tread on the rolls and we're going to fold it over like so. Then. So yeah. so now it's smaller than the room and now we can square it up and position it. So if Brad gets on one side, I'll get on the other. And it is, when it's all folded up like this, it's a lot easier to move than trying to just unroll it. You'll get yourself in a massive mess. You've got to square it up first. See how easy we can move. This lounge is seven metres long nearly. And we, me and Phil can move it with ease. So basically, you don't want to lay out the rest of that big lump before you're square in a nice area and you've got all three of these walls and you can open it out and just make sure that it's nice and square along one of the walls before you even attempt unrolling the big ravel bit we have behind the camera. Once you are to this section, we've got half the room laid out, we've got our little coils of carpet there, we're square, we're as close to that sec section that we need to be. We've now got an obstacle. So to do this, me and Brad are going to grab the very last loop. So that's the last one there. We're going to pick the carpet up, watching the wall. Yep. And we're going to shuffle up using my foot. I'm going to feel for the wall. Okay. And then we're going to come back again like so. Keep that square. Yeah, nice and flat up to the first object. You can't rush this bit because you'll end up flapping like a big chicken. So once you're up to here, we're going to cut this. So we're going to pull it on its back. Be careful not to go too far and cut underneath. We're going to come back a little bit, just remembering that we're inside this wall. And then we're going to come straight. We've got to go this much to get this bar here. So that's enough. And now we can come across. going to sit there and if you look down you can either leave this on fight through or if you come through and leave enough overhang you can just cut this excess off we don't need all of that so we're going to cut that down but you don't have to do this you can leave it on if you're a bit worried so we're just going to take the same amount off of this don't think this is. Like so, and now the rest, we're going to walk up to the next corner. When cutting these corners, guys, just remember, don't cut one if you've got a stretch off it. So just make sure that when you're cutting them, that you don't cut too many on the wrong side. So if you was going to stretch off of this corner, you wouldn't go straight. You wouldn't go cutting it net like we did the last one. What you can do, if you just drop in a few inches and cut that there, obviously be careful of underneath if you're not too comfortable with a knife, lift it up and cut it. And now you've got three inches of stretch there to move off of that wall first. But because we're coming this way, we can actually cut this one. Just remember, always coming away from the corner so you don't cut it short. And then we're going to lay this flat. And then we're going to cut any excess carpet off like this. So just fold it on his back. We're up to the wall. And because we're up to that wall, it's impossible to cut it short. So just allow a few inches. Cut that like so. Get rid of that. 
you're gonna do that, you're gonna do that the whole way around the room. You want it nice and manageable now. So this is way too much. So I'm gonna copy exactly what Phil done, pull it on his back, and just give yourself enough that it will go back up the wall. Be careful, because the mistake has been done many a time, especially when you're first starting out carpet thin, you can mark this bit below. So just keep checking, keep it in the air like so, and just run it along and get rid of any of the access carpet. Let's cover the bare minimum tools you can use. So this is all you can, all you're gonna need to do your own carpet. We've got plenty of other stuff, but this is the minimum you can use. So we've got our carpet knife, which we showed you. Sweeney Todd blades, very important to have good blades. This is a stair bolster, but we can use it to tuck carpet on flat areas, and we'll show you that. And this is a carpet stretcher. That's the knee pad where your knee and they are your teeth that you adjust. And the way I set this is I sit in the carpet. This is my personal method. I wind the teeth out. You see, it just picks up off the floor and I back it back down so it's flat. That's how I set my teeth on all different thicknesses of carpet. Right, so on longer rooms like, like this one, and because we're using a knee kicker, for the old DIYers, you're going to want to split the room into two sections. So it's going to help you get a decent stretch on both halves. So we've picked a point, which is the, it's not exactly half, but it's a post. So we're going to come straight off of that and it hits this radiator. So normally we'd worry about it stretching to and fro from here, but because we're going to lock it across, we can actually cut this pipe. And how we do that, we back the carpet up, roll it up to it, Put the knife in and a straight cut like so. And we're not going to do anything else to that except put two V's in. <laughs> Once you've done that straight cut, we're going to do a little V like so. Pull that over, little V, and that will tuck round. You may need to retrim this in a minute. If it stretches and gets stuck, we just put a little bit more of a slit, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So right. now we can lock it onto our first starting point. Right, so what Phil means by separating the two rooms, so he's gonna basically make this area here, so I'm gonna do a little line in, little line in the carpet, so this is a little square, he's gonna fit this as a whole separate room by just locking from that section there straight across to that side, and that actually acts as a wall. So it always looks complicated, but now Phil's separated that area, and look at this nice square area now, Phil's gonna fit afterwards, if you can imagine this is the wall. So this is going to be our starting point, we've split the room. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take about a foot's worth of carpet here. I'm going to pull it on his back, and this is called a back cut, or a side cut, sorry. And we push the loop up to the skirting, and we cut through the middle of it. So take your time, don't rush, because this takes a while to get used to. And you should be left like with something that looks like that, just a bit long. And we're going to take our stretcher, and we're not stretching. We're just holding the pressure of the carpet. You see how lightly I'm tapping that? Put my knee behind it. It's just going to stop the carpet moving back. And we're not doing all this. That's not what you do. We're tucking it. So we're just going to roll our bolster down the gap. And it looks a bit messy, but you'll see. And then all we do now is we come back and we tidy that up. And now you can do this really, really lightly. We don't, we're not trying to smash carpet into a gap like that. And then we bring the bolster to its side and we drag it over the pins. You don't have to do this, but it's our preferred method. We just think it helps lock. So if we just check this, we're gonna give it a pull. That's locked onto the gripper. We're happy with how that looks down the back. Now we're gonna stretch across. Right, so opposite that, we're gonna lock on the same amount of carpet. So I'm just gonna fold this back and cut straight like that. So we've just got a line where we're stretching. So that one will be there. And then we're just gonna trim this down. 
and now we can stretch this on so we're not cutting anything we're not trimming anything we're just stretching at the moment and we're going to use our bolster so we stretch it and we're going to push our bolster into the corner stretch push into the corner and what that does is help lock this so now the carpet is stretched onto there so stretch bolster push into the corner stretch bolster and what that does is that creases the carpet and that is now locked so this little section here is stretched tight across here so we'll cut and tuck that also note that after I've stretched it there's no bubble that's flat if you've got a bubble here pull it back off and bring this cut back further okay once you've tucked this little section in to get the pipes all neat as you can see they don't look very good at the moment take the back of your knife and we're just going to roll it around and tuck that carpet down into the pipe and that is all you need to do with that so like we did across this section here we're going to do this section so always place pressure on the head kick bolster in the corner kick bolster and that should be locked on so just give it a pull you'll see that that's locked on I'll now cut around these frames pull it on its back push through the side follow the pattern of the frame take your bolster roll it in and you should be left, left with something like that and we're going to do the same here and here and then we'll show you what we've got so far with regards to the room the field has actually just locked across from one side of the room all the way across to here and now these areas are completely separate so now we're going to stretch that side first the nice square easy room to explain to you guys at home that it's nice and simple we're going to show you some stretching methods and then we'll move on to the next step over there so now you've got your first wall on guys it's time to move on to your second wall and usually i like to do it near a radiator because they're harder to tuck underneath and they're easier to kick off so make sure if you can start on sort of a radiator wall, that does help. So, Phil's tucked that little section in under there. And what we're going to do is, we're going to kick it all the way down to this section here. So we're going to have a stretch going all the way down here. Uh, the only thing is, there's a radiator pipe. So what I've got to do is, I've got to give it a little stretch that way. Put a relief cut in this first. And then finish the stretch up that end. So if I grab myself a stretcher. I'm going to grab myself a stretcher and I'm going to hold tight because you can slip with these things so just make sure you hold onto the top and give it a nice kick and as you can see see that there that's the amount of stretch that this little section has created and then we'll do a re nice relief cut it's, it's going to be quite tight now we need to cut this corner and that's just creating a relief cut so that makes it nice and easier to stretch so how we do that you grab your two fingers you push it right into the corner and you get your peak of your knife, you pull it out towards yourself, poke it in, and you do a nice little V for vendetta. And you push it in the corner like so, and that helps get the stretch coming up this way. Right, so now that you've created a relief pipe, uh, a relief cut around your radiator pipe, now it's time to stretch up. So how you do that, you grab hold of your stretcher, stay away from the grippers in front of you, hold down the pressure so it don't slip, and give it a good boot in and then grab your bolster and lock it into place and that will hold the stretch still so you've got time to cut it that's nice and locked on there so that section will be nice and locked tight so now we've created a nice L stretch it's time to cut it now I'm going to show you a simple method of cutting that's less risky so what you want to do is you've got a nice long wall here you can either just go up to it and go and then you've got risk that you've damaged your expensive carpet or you could come along, you could put relief cuts in it like so. So it's only a straight wall and then just do loads of little bits like this. 
do that all the way along your wall, especially for beginners. This really helps because if you get a section a little bit wrong, you know that you need to change on this section. So grab your knife and roll it through. How much carpet do you need to leave? You need to leave en enough on the first wall that you have a nice amount to tuck down like so. So it won't look neat at first, don't worry. Because when you tuck it down, it looks comes out nice and neat. So move on to the next section and you're like, oh, that bit I cut a little bit short. Don't worry, that means you need to know on the next section that you need to add a little bit more and you'll slowly move along and you'll be getting better and better and then you should just do bigger sections and be like, I'm getting used to this, so I'll do a bigger section. And just keep doing that all the way around the room. That's a good top tip on how to cut a carpet. Right, so my name's Phil and I'm the captain of the safety. <laughs> so Brad's shown you this cut. It's called a side cut. But what I want to point out before you move on and before you cut your fingers off is your hand position. Look at my left hand, or if you're right-handed, your right hand. I've got my fingers pushing down on the top and I've got my thumb just catching the top there, lifting the carpet up in the air and my hand is up and down. I'm never like this. Don't have your hand like this. And the reason is, if you're not experienced and you're not very competent with a knife, what can happen is you can slip out of the carpet and cut yourself. But if you have your hands like me, you can do it as many times as you like, nothing's gonna happen. So remember that when you're doing this method. Remember where you put this hand. Don't get lazy and put it like this, because you're gonna cut your fingers off. Okay? Okay, let's cut the rest of this wall in. Right, once you've cut the first wall in, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go along and tuck this one in finished. So, what I'll do is I'll put my stretcher there, tiny, tiny little cut, we're not stretching yet, and then we roll the bolster into the gap. And that gives us a nice finished tucked carpet. Another method you can do, only on this wall because we're not stretching yet as such, is you can hold your fingers on the gripper and roll it in like that. But that will hurt your fingers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stretch the length of this room up this wall. So we'll do that now with the method that I showed you like that. There's one difference and that is on the head of your stretcher you've got this slight bevel. We're just going to sit that flat so you should end up with this 10 degree. And that's going to help push all the excess carpet to one corner. So we're going to go across this like so. And we've got a little drop back here, so that's another little thing you might have. We're going to stretch past that corner, hold the stretch with our leg, pull that back, and another relief cut. And we're going to let that drop in there. Make sure that's locked on, which is. Now we've got a bar here, so we're actually just going to hold it into the bar, like so. Which is the same method, we're just holding it in place. And before we move on with any more of that stretch, we've got another drop back here, but we're coming this way. So we can cut this one, and we know that the carpet's gonna move that way, it doesn't matter. We'll lay that in place. Do some relief cuts like Brad showed you. Little pig's ear, wallop. And then we're gonna do the same over here. So let's get the rest of this in. Right, so we're on the last wall. Imagine you've got a box, a square box. We've done this wall here. We've come up this wall. We've then stretched this wall. And now we're gonna do the same thing here, but we're gonna go back towards that same corner. We wanna work into a corner because that's gonna take all the stretch into that corner. We don't wanna now come down here because then we're twisting the carpet. Right, so like we did before, remembering that 10 degree angle on the top of your stretcher, hand over the head, kick, lock. One head space every time. Right, so we're gonna crack on with the other half of the room. It's exactly the same process as we showed you now that we've split it. So you go and do yours. I hope you've enjoyed this. Just remember to like and subscribe. Bring it up.